Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com, and this is part 27 of our Coded UI video series. And in this part, we're going to talk about data-driven testing with Coded UI. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 26, since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. And the most important thing is we have segregated this data-driven testing with Coded UI in two parts, which is part one and part two. So in this part, we're going to do some part of data driven testing and in the next part we'll complete the remaining so let's get started so data driven testing with excel sheets we have already discussed data driven testing with csv file in part 7 of this video series if you remember we used data source attribute for our test method and we used test contest dot data row methods to read the data out from a csv file but if you also remember we had some problems there we couldn't able to iterate over any of the values because the iteration was taken care by some of the properties which is available with visual studio itself rather you can do it via code so the test contest data row method iterations was controlled by visual studio but you don't have access to those via code that was the greatest problem so you cannot do a for each loop and try to iterate the value out from a csv file no you cannot do that and we cannot be very precise about which column or data row that you need while you need them so at any given point of time if you try to read a precise column of a particular row then suddenly it was not possible because the iteration was completely not under your control only if you give the row number explicitly at any given point of time then you can grab the value out from the column names at any given point of time which was not pretty much possible with the data source attribute which was available with visual studio hence we can write a custom data driven library for our excel sheets so in this video tutorial of data driven testing we're going to use excel as the data source rather csv file right so we're going to create a custom data driven library for excel sheet and then we're going to read the data out from excel sheet and going to populate the data into our applications ui so as always before starting to create any custom library it's always a good practice to first create a design before writing the code so we're going to first read the data out from an Excel sheets. That's the most important part we're going to do first. And then we're going to parse the data of the Excel sheet. So we, we need to somehow parse the data out from the Excel sheet. That's the very important second part. And then we're going to store the data which we have read from the Excel sheet into C sharp collections. The collection can be anything. It can be a hash table, it can be a list, or it can be a dictionary. And in this case, we're going to use list. So we're going to store that as well. So the reason for storing the data out from the Excel sheet into the C sharp collection file is we're going to work all the data from in memory, rather reading the data every time by opening the Excel sheet, reading the data and getting back to the applications UI. No, that's not the best practice. It's always a good practice that when you start working with any of the external data source, then try to read the data out from the external data source and store it in your memory because you can always easily parse those data or perform any operation or read the data out from an in memory much faster than the data which is available in the external data source like Excel sheets. So that's why I'm storing it in C sharp collections. And then I'm going to read the data out from the collections instead of directly reading the data out from the parsed data of an Excel sheet, right? So this is how our library is going to work. So this is the design that we're going to do for our data driven testing with code.ui. Great. So reading and parsing data from the Excel sheet. So this is the first part, first two parts, which we discussed. So instead of we do a lot of code to read data out from Excel sheet, since Excel libraries are exposed as COM components in Windows, and hence 
reading them need calm interrupt library in Visual Studio. So it's a kind of very nagging stuff. Even though there is a dynamic key available in C Sharp, you can always store all the calm interrupt related information into dynamic and then from there you can parse the data which is much faster and easier than your earlier version 4.0 or something in .NET. It's much easier right now because the introduction of dynamic keywords but still it's a lot of code because we are doing automation here we don't have to think all those reading of data and how things works all those things we don't have to care about so in this video tutorial we're going to use a most popular plugin which is available online in codeplex which is nothing but excel data reader so this is the data reader which is available in codeplex as you can see here it reads the excel file in your dotnet so this actually reads the data from an excel sheet it can be an XLS file or it can be an Excel X file. So it reads all those data and it will show the data into your code. That's it. So we have read the data and parsed the data. Those operations can be easily done using this single plugin, Excel Data Reader. So you can also download it via NuGet Package Manager to reference in your project. So let's see how things works from there. So I'm going to flip to Visual Studio right now. So this is the same project which we have been working so long and you can see that we have hard coded the username as Karthik here and also for initial we have hard coded the value KK here right so we're going to replace these values hard coded values into the data which is coming from the data source so we're going to use the data source like Excel sheet to read the data out from there and then we're going to pass that value right here so that you can always parameterize the value as you do in QDP or Selenium. Well, in Selenium as well, we, can, we use JXL library to read the data. And we have created an exclusive video for data-driven testing using JXL for Selenium. So you can watch that video as well. And you will get an idea of how we manipulated that in Selenium. And here in Coro UI testing, we're going to do it in a different way. So the first part here is to install the Excel data reader from NuGet package. So as you can see right now, I don't have any reference for the Excel data reader. So I'm going to just right click this reference and there is something called manage NuGet packages. So I'm going to hit that and then I'm going to search for Excel data reader right so if I hit search that so it will bring me up the Excel data reader so as you can see it brings me up the Excel data reader and you can just hit the install here so it will just install the Excel data reader into your Visual Studio and it add a reference as well so you can see that it has added a reference right here right there's an Excel and there is a sharp zip library right so these are the new references which has been added great so since we're going to write a custom library I'm going to write a separate class so for that I'm going to add a class file and let's call that as a Excel library or something like that maybe let's give a good name Excel util right so I'm going to create that so this will add a new class for me amazing so let me just create the methods for that. So for the sake of time, I have already created some of the methods. So I'm just going to copy paste that, which is a very easy step for me right now. So I'm going to paste it right here. And I will just explain this code in a minute. So first, let me add the references for all the exceptions which I'm getting. So first, I'm going to convert the data, whichever we have read from Excel Sheets, into a data table. So I'm going to store all the data into a data table right now. That's what I'm going to do right here. So let me first add the reference for the data table. So control dot will bring me up this pop up. All right. And then the file stream is missing. So I'm going to add that as well. And create. And there is an IE Excel data readers. So this interface is actually coming from the Excel data reader reference that we added using NuGet package manager so control dot see as you can see it asks for the Excel great 
and all the errors are gone right now great so let me first quickly explain you how this code works so the first and foremost thing here in this method is we are getting the file name as a parameter great so it can be of any file name so moving forward you can have any file name to be passed here so I am parameterizing that great and what else it does it has a file stream and it first opens the file which is pretty straightforward so we have a stream of data right now and the Excel data reader factory has a method called create open XML reader so the name is a little confusing here it seems it seems to be like an open XML reader but actually it reads the dot XLS X file right so that's why they have this create open XML reader there is one more method as well like create binary reader it actually reads the XLS file right so we're gonna use the create open XML reader great so this will read the dot XLS X file right and then we're gonna set the first row as the column name for the Excel reader so you'll understand what I mean here in just a minute right that's done and then I'm gonna convert the value which I have read from the Excel data reader as a data set right and then since it is a data set it's returning me as a data set that's why I'm creating a result for the data set and then since the data set can have any number of tables I'm going to read all the tables and then I'm going to store it in a data table collections and then what I'm going to do is using this collection I'm going to pass the name of the table so since any Excel sheet will have sheet 1 sheet 2 or sheet 3 by default I'm going to use sheet 1 since that's where I'm holding all my data so I'm passing in the table name as sheet 1 and that will return me the table which I'm looking for and then I'm returning that particular data table so that's the method name Excel to data table so it reads the data as an Excel and then it converts it into a data table that's it so this is the method for parsing the data so let's see how this works so for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create a Excel sheet all right and then let me add the username field and initial field so the username is going to be Karthik and the initial is KK great so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just save this thing into my computer let's say I'm going to save it in my D colon and let me add as xls great so I have just added it and I'm going to just close this great so let me call this method and see if this code really works or not so for that I'm going to add a breakpoint here while debugging I can see what's happening really and then since we're not going to use this method since this method is not fully ready yet so I'm going to the code.ui test 1.cs and then in the initial itself before opening any browser or something like that I'm going to first call this Excel util util is equal to new Excel util great and then it will dot Excel to data table and then the path of the file so which is nothing but d colon backslash data dot xls x great so just called the method amazing so let me just run this and see how things works so I'm going to the test explorer and then I'm going to debug the selected test so this will anyhow call me the initial oops getting some error here what does it say the type system dot XML dot serialization dot I serialize is defined as an assembly that is not referenced where is that error is happening hmm. so there is an error so what's really happening is I think if we add the 
reference for XML, then this error should go. So I'm going to add this system.xml and hit OK here. Great. Amazing. Let me just go and build this solution. All right, succeeded. So now if I let me see if I put the breakpoint here. OK, it's missing. So let me put that and let me debug the selector test. So. All right, so the breakpoint is just hit. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting the file name and then I'm getting the file by reading the data and then I'm getting the data set and then let me see if I get the data table. There we go. Did you see that? There's a username as the column and the initial is the column name and the value for the username is Karthik and the initial is KK. And this is happening actually because we have set a property as his first row as column name is equal to true. So if we don't set this property, actually the reverse will happen. The both the values, whichever you are seeing right now, the username, initial, Karthik, KK, both will be in a row. And here for the column name will be like column one and column two. There won't be any column name. So because we have set this particular property as true, it's actually coming here, right? So great. So we have did a great job here, like reading the data out from an Excel sheet and then converting it to data table. So which is great. So this actually ends the part one of our DDT video of this video series. So in the next part, we'll do the rest of the stuff. So thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.